lots of different palettes out there. Um, I suggest if you're starting to get a good travel palette, there's a good chance you're going to be taking classes. When you do, um, this is a nice one that's, that's relatively new on the scene. It's a nice sturdy plastic and it also has a little gasket that runs around the edge. So when you pack this up to go home and you close it up and put it in your bag, you're not going to get home and your paint's everywhere except on the palette. So it's a good little palette. Um, when you get a new one, you want to clean the surface, even the, even the wells, with a slightly abrasive cleaner and just rub it on and then rinse it off. If you don't do that, what will happen, when we paint, we paint with puddles, uh, which we mix with the paint on our palette and water. And on these, because they're new, see how the paint beads up? So you really need to get rid of that before you can learn to paint, before you're able to paint. And just by removing that, that coating, you can jump right in. The old time palette, uh, and I've had this one for probably 20 years. This is a John Pikes palette. Very sturdy, it's a hard plastic, and I would guess that most of the artists, uh, watercolor artists, would use this palette, unless they have their own. Um, these things are so sturdy, I had one teacher who actually ran over hers one time in her car and didn't even break it. So, <laughs> that was a good thing. I use one that's similar to that, uh, and unfortunately they don't make it anymore. I'm trying to find someone who can. Um, it's like a folding Pikes palette. Has nice size wells and lots of good mixing space. And a place for your brush and a sponge. When you put your paint in the palette, decide where you're going to put it. I tend to group um, my colors together. Um, and then I put my lighter colors way off to the end because it's not a round palette just to keep them from getting dirty from all other darker colors that would infiltrate those. But when you, when you want to put paint in your palette, you want to squeeze this in and fill it all the way up. And if you get the tip end of your brush and stir it or even a um, toothpick, leave this open for three or four days and let these dry. They'll get nice and, and hard. So you can just carry this around. It's, it's not going to be damaged, but also it keeps these paints nice and clean. So when you lay your brush on it and it has another color on there, all you have to do is wipe it off. You can actually put it under the faucet and clean it off and, and you're good to go again. So leave this out for three or four days. Let these get nice and hard. And then you can close it up and, and work with that. We're going to talk a little bit about paper. And the first one is paper towels. All paper towels are not created equal when it comes to art. For watercolors, Viva is your friend. Um, and I'll show you a little bit of the reason why in a little while, but there are occasions where we want to lift paper, uh, lift paint from the paper, and we'll lay this down and just run our hand across it to lift it works really well with Viva. It's kind of like a woven fabric. If you use the quilted picker upper or the scrubbing circles and you lay that down, you lift it up and then you end up with a lovely pattern of scrubbing circles on your paper and your painting. So good for cleaning the kitchen, good for art. Let me suggest too that when you paint that you just fold one of these and tuck them right under your palette. Which brings up another point. If you are right-handed, Put your palette, your paper, your brushes, everything on your right side. Left-handed, same thing. It keeps you from reaching over here across and dragging paint and dropping it on your paper when you paint. So keep things clean, but it's also ergonomically makes a lot more sense. Um, you'll get to the point if you use the same paints and the same uh, location for your, your supplies, you'll be able to reach over here and get paint without even looking. So you'll know exactly where things are. Um, good habit to get into. When you start to paint, clear everything off your desk except what you're actually going to use while you paint. Um, it clears your mind and you really need that these days. I do. Um, it, it frees you from worrying about, oh, I'm going to go do the dishes or you know, I'll go let the dog out and go for a walk. Then I'll come back and paint. Just clear it all off. And that really is a good rule for everything that you do. 
paper. Um, for the most part in class, we use arches blocks or uh, other, other watercolor blocks. I like this very much. It's 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. It's on a block. These things come with 20 sheets. They're attached around the edges and there's a little opening right here, which is why you have your palette knife. When it's time to remove these, they come with a black sheet on the front. Everybody opens it and goes, oh my God, I got the wrong thing. But that black sheet is really good for throwing away. If you leave it in there with it, it can also get damp and, and fade onto your paper. So you want to insert this palette knife in this little opening. It even gives you the instructions here, but I have yet to see anybody in the hundreds that I've shown this to who's ever seen it. <laughs> Remove sheet by inserting palette knife here. Actually, it says her, but they all say that. You always want to pull out and away. Don't pull in this way. Um, these papers are made of layers, and it, there's a good chance that when you come in this way, you're going to rip it. Um, it only takes once, and, and you'll remember that. Let me suggest to you also that when you start, get a little watercolor sketchbook. Keep it off to the side. Um, you really want to use watercolor paper. If you're going to be doing test strokes, you want to know what the results are going to be. So always keep one, and it also is great for testing colors. Paper comes in weights, and it's described that way. This is 140 pound. Uh, it's my opinion that anything less than 140 pound is just too thin. When they talk about the weight of the paper, they're not talking about this little block of paper being 140 pounds. They're talking about a ream of paper, 144 sheets, and in watercolors, a full sheet of watercolor paper is actually 22 inches by 30 inches. So a stack of those, a ream would weigh 140 pounds. There's heavier weight paper, which is actually in this sketchbook, called 300 pound paper. Same thing. Um, it's a heavier weight, almost like a board. Then there's illustration board, but most watercolorists use 140 pound or 300 pound. I tend to go with the heavier weight paper when I'm doing larger pieces. It's just a little bit more sturdy. Um, it has a slightly more texture, um, but for the most part, this serves you quite well. Different manufacturers have different uh, qualities to their paper. And one that is important to me, because I like to make corrections, and I know you probably won't ever make a mistake, but just in case you do. This paper has sizing, internal sizing, <coughs> excuse me, and external sizing. What that means to you as a watercolorist is that it allows you to lift paper. It sits on the surface of the paper so you can move it around, uh, you can make changes. Some of the softer papers don't allow you to do that. You put the paint down and, and that's it. <laughs>